I'm sure you've heard that using your phone, TV, or computer before bedtime messes with your sleep. The main reason for this is that these devices produce circadian disrupting blue light. As someone who studied the topics of light and sleep extensively, it is true that too much blue light before bed can delay the circadian rhythm, which can potentially affect the quality of your sleep. And in a near perfect world, we would all be surrounding ourselves with almost perfect darkness once the sun goes down. But I'm sure 99% of you watching this are still using your screens just 20 minutes before you go to bed. I know it's the case for me, and it's really just a fact of modern life. Well, today I wanna to show you a few things that you can do to drastically cut down on the amount of blue light your screens produce. But first, I've gotta show you a few things so you know why I'm making these recommendations. First, I need to talk about what I mean when I say blue light. On the screen, I've got something called a spectral power distribution or spectrum. It's a graph of all the different colors of visible light and the relative intensity of each color. So on the left, you have ultraviolet to violet light, and on the right, you have red to infrared light. In between, these are all the visible colors of light. The hump you see in this region is what we care about. When our eyes are exposed to light in this region, it can delay our body clock, which affects sleep. This blue light has a peak around 490 nanometers, but as you can see, it spans all the way from about 400 nanometers to 600 nanometers, meaning it also encompasses violet and green light. That means that green light also affects sleep. Let's take a look at the spectra of various light sources. You can see that daylight effectively fills out the circadian region, meaning it produces a lot of circadian light. Here's a cool white LED. It also produces a lot of melanopic light. Now let's take a look at a soft white LED, much less blue than the previous two examples. In fact, it's about the same amount of blue light as incandescent. To quantify this blue light, we're gonna use a metric called the melanopic ratio. The melanopic ratio tells us how much blue and green light we have as a proportion of all the light. A lower melanopic ratio means less blue light or less circadian disruption, and a higher melanopic ratio means more blue light. But the melanopic ratio or amount of blue and green light are not the whole story. Circadian influence also depends on the brightness or intensity of the light. We use two metrics to measure intensity. Lumens are the brightness of the light source themselves. So something that has 800 lumens is going to be brighter than a light source with 400 lumens. When you buy light bulbs, you'll actually see the brightness written on the packaging in lumens. Computer displays and TVs use a similar metric called nits. More nits means a brighter maximum display brightness. The other metric is lux, or the amount of light that's received at your eyes. If you ever see a manufacturer advertising a light source in lux, they are not being truthful with you. It has to be in lumens or nits. I made a whole video about happy lights or sad therapy lights about this huge farce. To illustrate the difference between lumens and lux, I like to think of lumens and nits as the light sent or emitted by the light source, and lux as the amount of light received at the eyes. Now let's combine the concepts of melanopic light and intensity. If you multiply the melanopic ratio by lumens, you get melanopic lumens, or the amount of circadian disrupting light that's emitted by a light source. You can do the same thing with lux. If you multiply the melanopic ratio by the lux, you get melanopic lux, or the amount of circadian light received at the eyes. So if two screens are the same brightness in lumens, but one of them is displaying content with a lower melanopic ratio, you will receive fewer melanopic lux in your eyes. But if you were to display the same content on two screens and then make one screen half as bright as the other, you would receive half the melanopic lux from the dim screen. Okay, I realized that whole explanation was kind of fast. It's probably the coffee. But if you want me to explain these things more in another video, I'd be happy to do so. Just let me know in the comments. In the meantime, I suggest that you go back and watch that section a few more times so you can let these concepts sink in. Finally, I've got some general comments about blue light. The time we really care about reducing blue light is in the last one to three hours before you go to bed. This is one of the most critical times in influencing the circadian rhythm. So if you get a lot of blue light before you go to bed, it's going to cause circadian delay, which may affect your sleep. 
On the flip side of that, you probably don't have to worry about blue light during the day, and it may actually be a good idea to go out and get some. So I don't wanna see you go buying blue blocking glasses and then wearing them during the day because it's actually going to defeat the purpose of getting blue light during the day. I hope I've driven home the point that the amount of blue light you get right before you go to bed is very important. So it's important to try to reduce that blue light. The rest of this video is gonna focus on three things you can do with your computer, TV, and phone displays to reduce the amount of blue light they're producing. When you dim down your displays, you're reducing the amount of lumens or nits, which also reduces the melanopic content. It's an easy win, especially considering that most displays are too bright for use at night anyway. Basically every TV, phone, tablet, and computer monitor will allow you to reduce the brightness. I wish TVs made this easier, but it's super easy for phones, tablets, and many computer displays. I measured a bunch of displays to show you how much of a difference just dimming can make. For all the displays, I showed a pure white image and measured them at a consistent distance using a quite good quality light meter. My recommendation is to start by dimming the display down to the lowest comfortable level for you. This is gonna vary a lot from person to person, but I can almost guarantee you that for light at night, it's not going to be the max brightness setting that's most comfortable. It's gonna be something lower. And just by dimming down, you're also making a huge difference for your sleep. Which of these two screens do you think has a lower circadian input? If you guessed the orange one, you'd be right. Dimming the display is a great first step, but you can make an even bigger difference by installing or enabling software that gives your screen a night mode. What night mode software does is it reduces the short wavelength light. This tends to make your screen look more yellow, orange, or red, depending on the aggressiveness of the software. A rule of thumb that I like to give is that the more orange or red the screen looks, the less circadian light it's producing. One of the first pieces of software to give you a night mode was Flux, which was first released in 2008. While Flux is the software that I recommend for people wanting the most settings, many devices now come with a night mode pre-installed, and all you have to do is enable it. I'll provide some links in the description on how to set up night mode on Windows, Mac, and iOS devices. Android phones also have this mode, but different vendors give them different names. Now TVs are a little trick here. Many of them also have a night mode hidden in the menu, but the way you set up is going to change a lot depending on the manufacturer and model of the TV. On this Insignia TV, I can mimic a night mode by changing the color temperature to warm and then setting the display mode to movie. I measured various devices with the night mode on and off. For each device, I chose a white background and I made the display full brightness. You can see how much of a difference just the night mode makes. Now imagine what would happen if you combine dimming down the display and using a night mode. What if I told you that watching a movie is going to be better for your sleep than typing a Word document? It's true, a pure white screen is always going to produce more melanopic light than something that has a darker screen. For this part of the test, I'm going to use a free tool from the creators of Flux that tells you the melanopic ratio of any screenshot. The lower the melanopic ratio, the less circadian disrupting light is emitted. It's pretty clear that something like a movie or YouTube video is way darker than a typical website or Word doc. But if you're an overcommitted person like me, you often find yourself working quite late. That's why a dark mode can be so beneficial. More and more apps are introducing dark modes because many people find them easier to look at at night. But a side effect of dark modes is that they have a lower melanopic ratio than their light counterparts. Here's a comparison of a number of different apps with the light mode versus the dark mode. Huge difference in the dark mode, right? Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android all have system-wide dark modes these days, and many apps are also starting to introduce them as well. I've got some links in the description to show you how you can enable dark mode on each of your devices. If you're like me, you'll use a combination of dimming the display, night mode, and dark mode to drastically cut down on the amount of melanopic light that you're getting. But even doing just one or two of these things is going to be a huge win for your sleep. As someone who runs a company that's focused on giving people a better night's sleep, 
I often get a surprise reaction when I tell people that their home lighting can affect their sleep. They often tell me that they thought that was limited only to their phone or their computer producing blue light. The truth is that your home lighting is 50% of the problem. And it's not just LEDs either. Even incandescent lighting tends to produce a lot of melanopic light. You can solve this by using dimmers or getting some blue blocking glasses, but I've come up with a solution that I think is even more suitable for most people. Bedtime bulb is a light bulb that's specifically engineered to be used in the final three hours of the day, and we focus on reducing blue light. Even compared to traditional lighting like incandescent, bedtime bulb still has 50% less blue light than incandescent does. Unlike other sleep light bulbs though, we don't sacrifice the quality of the light. So you can actually see the same or even better under this light while getting way less circadian input. Bedtime bulb has been the top selling sleep light bulb in the US and Canada for the last two years. And it's made the difference of the sleep of tens of thousands of our customers. If you give it a try, I think it'll be a game changer for your sleep as well. You can purchase Bedtime Bulb from our website, bedtimebulb.com, or on Amazon. I'd love to hear your light and sleep questions in the comments below. You don't know how much the comments help me in deciding what to talk about next, so I'd really appreciate any input you have. With that said, thanks so much for watching and sweet dreams. <laughs>